another question that was asked in gate economics paper of 2023 is like this a consumer has the following utility function that is u of x1 comma x2 is equal to x1 bracket x2 plus 1 x1 and x2 are the two goods utility is a function of uh, two goods and it is being given by this very function price of good x1 and x2 are being given as is one dollar and two dollar respectively income of the consumer is being given as is $142. We have to find out the optimal quantity of good X1 and X2 at utility maximization. Okay, so what we are being given? We are being given the utility function that is U of X1 comma X2 is equal to X1 times X2 plus 1. Okay, price of good one is being given as is one dollar price of good two that means x2 is being given as is two dollar and income of the consumer is being given as is 142 dollar we need to find out the optimal uh, bundle that the consumer will be consuming okay so that is we want to maximize our utility function u of x1 comma x2 which is equal to so if i multiply it it will become x1 x2 plus x1 we want to maximize this utility subject to the budget constraint okay subject to the budget constraint budget constraint will be price of good one times units of good one plus price of good two plus uh, uh, sorry times units of good two it should be exhausted that means the income should exhaust here now price of good one is one so i can write x1 plus price of good two is two so we have two x2 should be equal to 142 okay so we want to maximize our utility subject to the given budget constraint graphically what exactly we are told to do simply if we have good x1 on horizontal axis good x2 on vertical axis maximization problem means that given this budget line we want to reach to this budget line okay so our indifference curve should be at the highest possible point okay that means we want to maximize our uh, utility subject to the given budget line and the optimal uh, you know bundle will lie at a point where our indifference curve will be tangent to the budget line at this point the condition is that our marginal rate of substitution between good one and two should be equal to the ratio of the prices that means p1 upon p2 this condition should hold so first order condition for maximization requires that our marginal rate of substitution between good 1 and 2 should be equal to the ratio of the prices P1 upon P2. By marginal rate of substitution, what we mean simply, it is marginal utility of good 1 upon marginal utility of good 2. It should be equal to the ratio of the prices P1 upon P2. Okay. Now, MU1 means, MU1 means the derivative of utility function with respect to good x1 divided by mu2 marginal utility of good x2 means the derivative of utility function with respect to good x2 okay it should be equal to the ratio of prices p1 upon p2 that is p1 upon p2 this condition should hold now if we take the derivative of this utility function with respect to x1 so derivative of x1 is 1 so we will be left with x2 in the first term derivative of x1 is here 1 so we will be left with plus 1 okay this is du upon dx1 okay this comes out to be du upon dx1 du upon dx2 if we take the derivative of this function partially with respect to x2 the derivative of x2 will be here 1 so we will be left with only x1 and since no x2 is involved in the second term its derivative will be 0 it should be equal to the ratio of the prices so p1 is being given as is 1 p2 is being given as is 2 okay that implies x1 is equal to if we cross multiply x1 times 1 is equal to uh, we have multiplying this so we get 2x2 plus 2 ones are 2 okay now we need to plug the value of x1 is equal to this into our budget constraint this is our budget constraint okay we put the value of x1 here okay so in place of x1 we write so let me write it here so in place of x1 we write uh, this condition so x1 is equal to 2 x2 plus 2 
plus we have 2x2 here 2x2 should be equal to 142 so 2x2 2x2 same terms we can add up them so this comes out to be 4x2 should be equal to uh, if I transpose this it will get subtracted with this 142 so 142 minus 2 comes out to be 140 which implies x2 will be equal to 140 upon 4 okay so we have here a 4 3s are that gives us x2 will be equal to 4 1s are 4 3s are 12 I think it is but through us 4 5s are 20 I guess it is 4 5s are 20 so 4 3s are 12 13 14 4 5s are 20 that means optimal units of good x2 will be equal to 35 to find the optimal units of good x1 simply plug the value of x2 back here okay that means our x1 will be equal to 2 in place of x2 we have 35 35 plus 2 this comes out to be x1 will be equal to 70 uh, 70 plus 2 which comes out to be x1 will be equal to uh, 72 okay i hope i made the calculation right here so consumer will be consuming 35 units of good x2 and 72 units of good x1 and we can check it here also so if x1 is equal to 72 this is uh, 72 plus 72 i guess i have uh, done the mistake somewhere here so if x2 is equal x1 is equal to 72 and so okay it is correct here i guess the calculation is right that means consumer will be consuming uh, you know 72 units of good x1 and 35 units of good x2 okay so optimal means we will be consuming uh, 72 units of good x1 and and uh, 35 units of good x2 i hope i make myself clear uh, here you know uh, this was uh, you know given by the friend is they uh, they asked me to solve this question uh, about the prices i'm not sure whether these uh, uh, you know prices were given in the question uh, but uh, one friend told me that income was given as 142 i'm not sure whether the prices were same here okay so i just cherry picked uh, the prices here but I am sure that income was 142 